So, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Amy Serberg. I own um, Barry Goods Farm um, in Morristown, Indiana, just uh, southeast of Indianapolis, uh, not too far from here. Um, we are a very small, diversified farm, um, just started in 2015. Um, this was something that I started on my own um, as a second career. My first career was in engineering um, to be able to stay home with my five kids. So I've got pictures of everybody on the farm there. Um, and something that um, really has become a passion of mine, growing has always been a passion of mine, um, but uh, farming is, is a whole next step. Uh, so I applied for the Farmer Rancher Grant and um, did some research on my farm, uh, integrating poultry and vegetables. Um, so the problem, uh, we started with Salatin pens and I think it was about 2012. Um, so they take space uh, to store all winter long. Um, and I wanted to do a little bit more in the winter uh, for our winter farmers markets uh, and growing. So I was looking into growing greens in the winter time. Um, and so I teamed up with actually my dad, who's a mechanical engineer, to design these, and we call them coop houses. We use them for chickens in the summer, and um, then we take two of them and combine them together to make a hoop house for the winter. Um, so here you can see the summer configuration. So these are designed um, with the Johnny's hoop house bender, or hoop bender uh, with the electrical conduit. Um, we did a four foot wall so that you could make it six foot tall to um, get into it. Um, in the summer configuration, this holds about 50 chickens. And then the winter configuration, you take this back piece, um, which is held on by carriage bolts, and you flip it out on each, on each of two coops and then slide them together and you have um, a greenhouse that's about 26 by six feet long. A hoop house, I should say, it's not heated. <laughs> um, <coughs> so in constructing this, um, Cost for the eight houses, materials 1745 and labor 1360. So it was a fairly low cost investment for me to be able to experiment with this and get some data on how well it worked on my farm. Um, so each house will cost us about just under $400. Um, they hold 50 Cornish cross chickens um, at just over a square foot per chicken because um, you've got about 60 square feet in those. Um, or And we also did turkeys, um, so we would run uh, 25 turkeys in a season um, and sell those at the local farmers market and to subscription customers. Um, and two houses together for the greenhouse configuration um, gives you approximately 100 row feet, depending on how you configure it, of um, salad mix. We, we grew salad mix kale. Um, I have pak choy in them right now. Um, several different types of crops that you could go. Um, so the potential number of chickens in six month season were about 300 per coop. Um, if you assume that you would brood, I had a separate brooding facility in the barn and would bring them out um, and then have them on the pasture the last four weeks of their lives. Um, and then winter harvest was, uh, we had a return of about $2 per row foot on that, um, which I think is fairly standard. <coughs> this gives you a little bit more detail. In the summertime, we would put in a reflective tarp um, to keep the chickens cooler. Um, obviously, you don't want them in a, a greenhouse with plastic heating up all summer long. Uh, you could also roll up, the, which you can't see as well, maybe in this picture here. You can roll up the sides. Um, so that four foot wall would be like a ledge and the hoop was on the inside. So you could roll up the sides and set that right there. And we had a little clip that came up to hold it in place uh, to give plenty of airflow for the chickens. But also then if there was a storm or something, we could roll those back down and keep the chickens from getting wet. Um, this right here was an important component. Um, this is a, just a, basically a, a three trailer hitch, um, and we used a lever. Um, it's a trailer, it's actually supposed to be like a hand trailer pooler. That was my lever to be able to move these by hand across the uh, field, um, and I was able to move them. That was an important part of this. My husband is a physician and isn't doing the farm, so I do the farm. <laughs> um, he helps, um, he helped with some of the construction and things, but. I wanted to have a system that I could manage on my own, um, and this was a way to do that. We constructed these to be pretty lightweight. Um, and over the couple of years that we've been using them, we've found that there are some stress points here that we've had to put like little triangles in to uh, reinforce a little bit um, just from the moving, just the jerking across the field as you go. Um, in the winter, so then we put, this is actually just a low tunnel I had, but. Uh, we, had, we would configure the houses kind of in a little village so it's easy to get from one to the other to work. 
and uh, there's my son helping us put one together. So you pre-plant the crops. And so I would plant my crops in August and I didn't need to slide the houses over them until about October timeframe when it started to get cold enough to get a frost on those crops. And I could put, this is um, the Agrabon, the frost cloth over those crops um, to help protect them through the winter. Um, pretty much the same thing you see done in the larger hoop houses. Um, and we would slide these over so when you open them up, you have a th you know, three ends that are open. You can just slide them over the crop, one on either side. Um, <clears throat> so, and then fasten it together here and put in another piece of plastic right there. Uh, we use the Johnny Seeds has those clips to, to put on there. Um, and those worked fairly well, but if you got a really high wind, they would pop off and fly across the field. So um, one of the things that we were playing with and we haven't done yet actually um, is doing some string across there, like greenhouse string, just to kind of hold things down a little bit better. Um, to insulate, um, you bring the curtain side down and then we put sandbags here to help hold that in place. And then we would use straw to help insulate the sides. And we found that that helped retain more heat through the, e through the night. And even though this was a smaller hoop house, I had a lot of the same results as people with much, much larger houses um, in terms of what would survive the winter and how cold it got. We did do some temperature monitoring. Um, in general, it kind of brought us one zone south uh, so that we had about 10 degrees warmer um, in there. Um, and that's just a picture of my kids out helping me do salad greens one winter. <laughs> Um, yeah, and that's, I kind of went through some of this already. I used row cover for insulation on the crops themselves. We did straw and sandbags on the side. Um, so it acted kind of like a modified low tunnel, but you could get in there and work. So with um, salad greens, I was able to cut and come back again, um, sometimes getting three or four cuttings before December when things were really, really slowed down. But that would get me through the um, Thanksgiving and Christmas markets. Um, so it was t yeah, tall enough to work for multiple harvest. Uh, we would vent them. Uh, usually, I had most of the trouble venting would be in the spring because in the fall, a lot of times I would wait till the very last minute to throw th to put those over the crops. Um, but in the spring, that is one thing about this house is being smaller. The temperatures were pretty variable up and down, so you would have to go out there and, and vent them. Um, but you could actually open up the plastic at the junction where the two pieces went together to vent it out the top if you needed to vent it quickly, or we could open the doors on either end. Um, that worked out really pretty well. And then as it got wa consistently warmer, you just roll up the sides. Um, we did find um, you could, we could reduce disease buildup to, by moving to different locations. Um, so one of the winters, we had a little problem at the end of the winter with uh, a downy mildew on some of the kale. So the next season, I just moved to a different location uh, and didn't have that problem that next season. Uh, that was one of the big advantages of being, having these be movable. Um, and we didn't supplement with heat, so they're truly just hoop houses. We took one house and modified it one winter for um, some laying hens. I wanted to rest my winter coop um, and get that really well cleaned out, um, especially the pasture area that was around it was getting too muddy. So we decided to use one of them um, for chickens through the winter, and actually that worked really well for us. Uh, we modified this door to put in a chicken door to help keep more heat in here. Uh, we used a straw for deep bedding, uh, you put it in, you know, six inches tall roughly and you keep adding through the winter and as that decomposes it adds more heat. Um, put in nest boxes along the side, since you had that frame on the bottom you could put nest boxes in there, we had roll out nest boxes on the side and put roosts in the back. We were able to um, keep 35 hens in there um, through the winter and um, with the solar heat and the deep bedding and the warmth from the chickens, we actually had less trouble with freezing in these than we did in our insulated coop. Um, we were able to keep the water um, from freezing except during really extremely cold winters. So this would have been not this past winter, but the winter before, which was a little milder, but we did have some of those really super cold days. Um, those would be the days that you would have to go out there and. Uh, change the water and make sure that the chickens weren't too cold, but we didn't have any, you know, frost damage or anything. Um, we, let's see, there's one other, I think that was it on that one, but that did work out very well for us. And then you have a place you can move your winter coop as well. So you're not, they're not married to one spot. Um, 
We did testing during this, and this was part of the research project. Did some t soil testing. Um, I don't know if you can see that real well with the light on this or not, but you can see the strip where we were going. And yeah, anybody that's familiar with the Salatin method, this is what the Salatin fields look like. You know, when you're moving your chickens across the field, they're fertilizing that area that they're moving in. And it gave us controlled fertilization. I was able to run in between my rows of blackberries. I could run them. In this case, I was running them up toward my orchard area. Um, and our t soil test, we took over two years for the um, project. We would take, or we, I would take five samples from the area that the chickens were in and five samples from an adjacent area that they were not in and blend those and then send them in. Um, and so you can see in 2015, the areas without chickens, this is your percent um, organic matter, uh, phosphorus, um, and then this, so this was out ch without chickens, and this is where the chickens had, were run, had run. And same thing in 2016, um, saw slight increases. So you're getting some increase in nutrients and organic matter, but it's not like a huge amount all at once. Um, I'm, I know there's a lot more uh, research that has been done on the soil impact here. This is just kind of an overview that we have. <laughs> so. Um, benefits of this project, uh, controlled fertilization, so we're controlling exactly where our chickens are going, um, continuous supply of fresh pasture for the birds. So we had uh, about four acres of um, horse, it was planted in horseman's pasture, which is a um, orchard grass and legume mix, which was really good for the birds. Um, it produces a great meat bird. It also helps um, with your eggs. You get these nice dark orange yolks. Um, our pen cost was recuperated faster um, since we were able to use it year-round, so I was getting return in the winter and not just storing that coop. Um, our business was a little bit more diversified, so going to the farmer's market, not, I had chicken and eggs, but I also had greens, so I was kind of like a one-stop shop at the farmer's market. Um, we found that that was a, a good advantage for our customers. Um, increased uh, our soil health over time and decreased fertilizer needs for the summer vegetables, so just, you know, you're slowly adding that organic matter and those nutrients, so I didn't have to fertilize the vegetables as much. Um, considerations. So, um, chicken storage, when you're growing a whole bunch of chicken, um, then you need freezer space. Um, and this was something that I really didn't plan for as well at the beginning of this project. Um, so we ended up not using the coops at the full capacity. With eight of those, we could have raised a lot more chickens than we actually did. Um, but what we did, do, we used the freezer space that we had and we did add one more freezer um, to be able to do more of that. Um, food safety, obviously, when you're integrating chickens and vegetables, you have to be cognizant of um, issues with chicken manure. Um, chickens can carry several human pathogens. Um, we would power wash the coops after we were done with them in the fall um, and before we put them over the this vegetable crop. Um, and then we would also use cover crops or time between uh, when we ran a chicken in a certain area or ran a coop through a certain area and when we would plant the vegetables. So I would allow that pasture mix to grow for a little while um, and making sure that we were following at least the organic standards of 120 days between the manure application and the vegetables. Uh, usually it was more than that. Um, drawbacks, um, so the current design, this design is pretty small. It's a uh, 20 by, or sorry, yeah, 10 foot by six foot pen, which is small enough to move by hand, but too small to make a, a very large, grow a very large batch of chickens at one time. I don't know if any of you are familiar with the prairie schooners, they will hold up to, I think, 1,500 chickens. There are some very large ones that you can use uh, and pull it with a tractor. It'd be interesting to see, you know, if you use one of those larger ones and then use that as a winter greenhouse or something like that, um, it how, what you would get there. Um, there's extra labor. Um, so the diversification comes with the drawback of, you know, you're managing chickens and you're managing vegetables. So I'm growing summer vegetables and I'm managing chickens at the same time. Um, we managed that, I managed, I hired somebody part-time to help me with the chicken operation, um, and that did help. 
Um, extra storage, I did mention that already, required in the winter for frozen birds to sell through the off season, um, which is different than your vegetable storage and needing coolers. So it's just a little bit more capital. Um, my conclusion that concluded that the system worked um, in a pretty complementary way. We felt like the being able to move where we put our vegetables in the winter was a big positive for our farm, especially for disease control. Um, we were making soil improvements um, fairly slowly, um, but we did make them. Um, and definitely one thing that um, I found pretty interesting was how well they controlled insects in my orchard um, and around my berries. I suspect, but I don't have obviously data on, you know, how they would have uh, controlled insects for the vegetables, but I would assume that you're going to get fewer, um, a lower insect population when your chickens are eating those all that constantly. Um, the scale of this project in particular would work in a smaller setting. So I have some numbers here about, you know, eight houses would take about 50 to 60 feet across times four to six weeks of movements for the birds, which gives you about um, 420 feet for one rotation by that, you know, if you're just going straight down. Um, so if you have a smaller urban garden type setting, um, this might be something that would work pretty well for you. Um, uh, she asked what breed of chickens I was using. So I used the Cornish Cross broilers for my meat chickens. Um, we used broad-breasted white turkeys for the turkeys. Um, my laying hens were a mixture of um, Golden Comet and Americanas. I like that blend for the color of the eggs. It's very marketable. 